This is the YouTube version of Couch to Boggle Level 2. Uh, I made the Instagram version first and probably came out first, but whatever. Uh, so just like the first Couch to Barbell, it includes five moves that will progress you from not being able to do, from not doing much exercise at all, in a safe manner up to being able to exercise with a barbell. Uh, regular, standard, skinny little Walmart barbell like this, right? Uh, <clears throat> and again, from the couch, from scratch. So these are progressions from the first moves. They are uh, light progressions, right? They're not drastic progressions. I'm not giving you a big jumps here. I'm giving you small jumps on purpose because any progress is progress, right? And we're looking to go in the right direction, not get hurt in the process. Uh, same as the last time, this program can be done every day or can be done every other day. It's pretty much what I recommend, what, one of those two options. Uh, or most days, right? It's not too heavy a program. As you get into heavier weights, then we will have to, you know, limit to maybe every other day at most. Um, two to four sets, 10 to 15 reps of each exercise. Uh, do I'll post a description of the, what the workout should be, but uh, in terms of uh, sets and reps and all that kind of good stuff. But that's kind of what we're looking for. As well as, I want you to incorporate a walking program uh, with this, as I mentioned in the first one. Walk after you do this, walk in another part of the day, walk in off days, whatever. But walk, do a regular walking program focusing on posture and nose breathing. Uh, breathing in and out your nose. If you, uh, you know, are bored with just walking 30 minutes, it's too easy, you know. Uh, you know, maybe th think of incorporating some light running, right, intervals in there. Maybe think of uh, finding some hills. Maybe carry a loaded pack or something, right? Make it a little bit more challenging. But don't, you know, again, we're starting from scratch, taking it easy. Uh, so, for no further ado, here are the five progressions. So on the first one, we did a movement called... Uh, I think I call it a rotational dead bug, right? I'm gonna just come up with these names. Uh, this one is gonna be a hip crossover. It's a progression of a rotational dead bug in that, well, it's rotational and it's on your back. But instead of focusing on just moving through the hip and the shoulder, we are gonna focus on moving through the rib cage. And this looks like, it looks like this. I'm gonna lift a leg off the ground and I'm gonna use that lift to kind of cue a lock between my hip and my rib cage. This, this bone right here in the top of your rib is, and your rib cage, and the bottom ribs are gonna hold a position relative to each other and stick to that, right? And then I'm gonna rotate that whole segment and my legs away from one of my arms. Oh, the one obviously away from the, the top leg. And look away from that arm as well. And that arm is gonna internally rotate as I do so. I'm driving into the ground with this one, pushing into the ground with this one, and the movement's gonna stop whenever this hand wants to follow, right? Or whenever these two points wanna pull away from each other. And I'm gonna come back in the other direction. And again, the reason the movement stops when the, the shoulder wants to follow, or when the hip wants to pull away from the rib cage, is because when that happens, the movement is no longer coming from that thoracic spine, that rib cage, which is what we're trying to mobilize. Uh, and again, you go back and forth, 10 to 15 reps, count down however you want, right? You can see if you keep one, one, or one, two, three, whatever you want. Uh, that's no big deal. And the reason we do this is because this is going to help us later with all the movements that involve moving through the shoulder girdle, right? Moving the push-ups and the, and the rows and the whatnot. Uh, second, the bridge. We're gonna start moving towards one leg movements with the bridge, which will help us become better runners and also better at any unilateral uh, movement like, like, like lunges, right? Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna drive down into the ground, we're gonna tuck our chin down, or going upstairs for that matter, right? I said running and lunging, but you know, going upstairs, uh, walking well, right? This helps with all that. Our lower back is flat, our chin is tucked, our shoulders are pressing into the ground, our feet are flat, our 
toes are spread, my fingers are spread too. I like spreading things. And then we're gonna lift up. Like I mentioned before, we really wanna always work on the hips moving together with the rib cage. And from here, once I'm up, this is why it's called a march, I'm gonna remove a point of contact, I'm gonna remove a heel. And the goal is that when I remove that heel, nothing changes up here, especially in the opposite leg, because most of the weight shifted to the other leg. Now I'll put that heel down, remove the other one, see nothing here changed. That's what we're looking for. And put it down, come back down to a nice flat lower back. Again, the hips and the ribs maintaining a position relatively to each other. And then come back up again. Now you can make this slightly harder, or quite a bit harder, by instead of just removing the heel, heel first and then the whole leg, right? It's quite a bit harder, less points of contact, less reference to your brain as where your hip is in space, where your hip is in space, that's what I meant to say. And then down slowly, toes first, heel down, same thing opposite side. Ooh, it just cranked up a little bit in my hamstring. And then down and flat. So again, 10 to 15 of those. Work on quality. If you can only do five, then do five, right? But I would, if you can only do five, I would just go back to regular bridges for a while. Make sure to stick to those heel ups before lifting the whole leg. It makes it quite a bit harder. Next, knee and elbow or knee and forearm push up. The goal of this one is teaching you how to use your abs in a push up, really. And teaching you how to use your shoulders in a push up. It's not an arm exercise only, right? Abs and the movements, the, the, the muscles that move the scapula or the whole shoulder girdle, right, are going to play a huge part in the push-up and in the process of standing, uh, you know, from that belly down position. So now, we are on our, on our belly, right, chin tucked, abs tight, I like to put my toes together, and I'm going to press through my forearms or my elbows, and I'm going to also press through my knees and come up as one piece. See, my back is really flat, it's not arched out like that. If it was like that, I wasn't really using my abs. Here, I'm using my abs, right? Because your abs flex your spine. And then I'm gonna go down. It's a really short movement. I mean, there's not much to it, really. Uh, once you get it, it'll become real easy. At first, it'll be kind of difficult, but teaching you how to do a push-up or asking you to do a push-up before you can uh, do that easily is basically like a, like banging my head, my head against the wall, right? It's, it's, it's pointless. So let's work on that. Let's be, let's be able to drive through the shoulder, stabilize through the abs, which is why when you're pushing down to the floor through your knees and coming up in that, to that plank position in one piece. And again, when I say 10, 15 reps, it's just, we're practicing. We're not, try, not trying to get a pump in your chest or, or even your abs, although it might happen, right? I'm just trying to give you enough practice of that movement pattern to it gets ingrained in your head. Uh, now, going on to our standing movements, uh, because a lot of barbell movements obviously are standing. Uh, I'm gonna get my trusty solid chair here that I'm gonna use for the movements. Uh, I'm gonna use a little yoga block here to hold the bar in place for my first one. <clears throat> and basically, what we're gonna do is a very, very short deadlift. So in the first uh, video, we folk, we did uh, the, the, the reach, and where I used the, knee, the, the, the chair to block my knees from traveling too far forward, so I would focus on the hip movement, and then we talked about the head and the hips moving together, being the two bookends on the, of the spine, of the, the spine, right? And they move together. Now we're gonna add some load, really, not a lot. We we'll start with empty bar. Now we need to focus on how we attach to the bar. In the first video, we, I talked about how you attach to the floor, right? Spread your toes, even out the weight between the toes and the heel, right? Now I'm gonna talk about how we attach to an external weight. And same thing applies, really. You can even out the weight across your, your fingers, right? And then we're gonna lock into the bar by kind of externally rotating your shoulder, which means you're gonna point the elbows back and towards your hips. And see how that kind of gets 
my, my whole shoulder girdle back and down. It's gonna contract this, these muscles right here in your armpit. And that's gonna help you move as one piece when you lift that bar. So again, just like we did this, we hip hinge, straight line, grab that bar, lock into it, drive your hips forward. My head goes back as my hips go forward, right? And then my, hip, my hips go back, my head goes forward. That's about it. It is easier said than done, right? But I, until you have this technique down, I don't want you going deeper with that bar. I don't want you going to the floor. And definitely don't want you putting weight on that bar. So let's work on that till it looks like that. Use your camera, video yourself, right? Now, then we're gonna work on squats. So in the first one, I use the bar to assist myself doing partial squats. Uh, right, I push down on it and squat it down. So today I'm gonna use the bar to kind of counter my load, to change my center of gravity. That's what I'm gonna say. Change my center of gravity. So oftentimes people lean forward too much because the gravity, the center of gravity is in this area, right? And, and they don't have a great ankle mobility. So they, they do tend to lean forward and do the squat, make it like a deadlift. So I'm gonna use the bar in front of you and you're gonna just curl it up. And if it's too heavy, your bar's too heavy to curl it up, then it's probably one of those big 45 Olympic bars. Uh, so you might need a lighter one. Or if you're strong enough, then, then so yeah, do it that one, right? Some of you gentlemen out there will definitely be strong enough to do that with an empty bar. So elbows forward. Uh, basically, my wrists are going to be right on top of my elbows in the, in the beginning of the movement. And then I'm going to do the same thing we talked about. I am going to, head goes forward, hips go back. But here we're going to have a lot more knee bend because the movement is more up and down than back and forth. And I need to keep the weight on my toes, right? In the deadlift, my head going forward a lot keeps some weight on my toes. In the squat, since I don't want that happening, bending of my knees makes it up and down and keeps some weight on my toes. And, but again, I'm not this, I'm not folding. My head doesn't move without my hips. My hips don't move without my head. It happens together, together, and together with a knee bend in this case. As I said in the other video, this is a really shallow squat, obviously. As we progress, we can definitely go into deeper squats. Uh, I had a little chair last time, but you know, I can show you my favorite ways. Thankfully, you know, my yoga teaching wife has a lot of these little yoga blocks, but you know, you can find shorter chairs and you can do the same thing to a shallower, to a deeper distance, to a deeper distance. Now, in my squat video, I talked a lot about knees, right? And toes and the relationship. Big toe, little toe thing is very important, right? It's not only pushing forward towards the big toe, little toe, is keep on in between the big toe, little toe, the knees, the direction of the knees. So whether you put your feet out or forward, eventually you want to get to forward because it's better for running and jumping and stuff like that. But for now, uh, whether you go back, forward or, 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 or not, right? Out or, or not, we want to keep that direction the same, right? So again, be aware of big toe, little toe relationship. Don't let it all go to a big toe. Don't let it all go to a big little toe. Keep it in the middle. Uh, that's it, that's it. I'll put some more info in the description of this video, but that's about it. Oh, give me feedback, please. I hope uh, I have to get better. I need feedback to get better. Thank you.